breaking news for you guys. Uh, breaking in the terms that uh, corporate mainstream media hasn't really fucking talked about this issue mm, at all. This happened last week in Louisville, Kentucky, home of the Uncle Tom DA that uh, basically did not get justice for Breonna Taylor, uh, continued to defend killer cops, uh, and on that matter, there were a lot of protests and activists that were out uh, asking for justice, asking for a complete, complete change of the criminal justice system, um, to funding the police, looking at community organizations, looking at ways to, uh, you know, uh, get more funding to social services, to uh, psychological services, mental health services, things of that sort, and getting rid of hyper-violent individualistic practices that we call American law enforcement. Um, And last Monday, seven days ago, one of the one of the lead activists, his name was Hamza Travis Nagdi. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. I apologize if I'm not. He went by Travis, right? Or or that was his nickname, among many nicknames that he had was uh, gunned down in, a, in an attempted, or, or rather what, what People.com reports as a botched uh, carjacking. So, so what does that mean, botched carjack? They, they didn't get away with the car, they killed the dude. That's, or, or you could just call it a murder. Like, couldn't you have called it a murder instead of a botched carjacking? <laughs> That's how people decided to, to write about it. A botched carjacking. Oh, not a successful murder? Of a black activist calling for justice against uh, the wrongful termination of a black citizen in America by killer cops who were too trigger happy and unloaded a barrage of bullets into this girl, lady's house. That was a botched act of law enforcement. That was botched protect and serve. How's that? So, he got killed, and there's a couple of media outlets covering it. A couple of media outlets. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, I got this from a friend of mine. I, I didn't even see it. It didn't, it didn't come up in, in my circles either. Uh, this has been kept relatively quiet. And, and we'll see, you know, and here's the thing. Uh, I wonder how quickly suppressed this video is going to get for talking about it. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, if you end up seeing this video, you know, share it on social media, send it via email, um, send it to people through Messenger and DMs, whatever you have to do, because even social media might suppress a story like this. And I'll talk about the implications of that in just a minute. USA Today did a thing. There's a couple local uh, alternative rags that did it, but nothing from the big three, right? CNN, MSNBC. Uh, I think MSN covered it. But they all kind of say the same thing. Oh, there was a carjacking, and he unfortunately died. And, uh, well, the authorities are looking, but they don't have any leads. They don't have any leads to figure out who killed this activist. Um, and for a week, this story kind of just sat there, and it stayed cold. And, and now it's now you know, the, with the pace of how quickly things move within the media, uh, you know what happens to this guy? 
what happens to getting justice for him? Regardless of whether it was racially motivated, whether it was politically motivated or not, you should be aiming to get justice for someone that was murdered in cold blood. And the media is is silencing the story. They covered it a little bit, and that's probably just enough for them to say that, you know, hey, liability, no problem. You can't sue us for anything. Why? Why are you not... I mean, fucking media loves murder. That's, it, you know, it gets the pundits talking. It gets people to come out of the woodwork, right? Like, you get to have on experts... You know, and they weigh in and they talk about this, that, and the third. How, you know, why we need more protection and more law enforcement. Get the cameras up on the streets and facial recognition. And all this other bullshit that comes along with covering a fucking murder case. The media loves murder cases. Yet, when it's the murder of a 21-year-old black activist that's out there looking for justice for Breonna Taylor who was illegally murdered by three gun-toting fucking chest-thumping law and order motherfuckers in the Louisville Police Department yeah let's let's make let's shush, shush, shush that story up very strange And, and there's going to be, you know, there, there's going to be so many fucking excuses that come out of this. Because anytime something like that, then you criticize corporate media, and you criticize, you know, uh, how leader. I mean, none of the Democrats have talked about it, right? They put their Black Lives Matter stickers, and they got their pins, and they dress in the African robes, and all that stuff. And when it comes down to a black activist that was shot and murdered... They're fine with media calling it a botched carjacking because the car wasn't stolen. Hey, at least that, well, what a positive spin on that story, huh? The car got to, the car's fine. You got, the car is fine. What are we even worried about? Hamza Travis Nagby was murdered. We are going to throw a litany of excuses as to why the media did not fucking cover any of this beyond Monday. Why hasn't anyone pressured the Louisville DA for a comment? You're going to hear a litany of excuses like, oh, do you know how many carjackings there are in America, you know, and a lot of them, uh, we can't solve, they can't solve, the cops can't solve it. There's so many carjackings. Well, it kind of sounds like we have a good reason to defund the police for incompetency. I mean, we're giving some police departments billions of dollars. Most police departments get hundreds of millions of dollars. And you're telling me that they can't figure out who carjacked Tom's a tra Travis Nagby. Well, there's a rise in homicides in Louisville. This is like the 145th one or something. You know, the the, the, the police have a lot of pressing matters going on. These these Well, this is a homicide. Corporate media can call it whatever it wants to fucking call it, but it's a homicide. By framing it as a botched carjacking, it makes it sound less than what it actually is. So then, you know, because what this sounds like now is, well then, we need to defund the police because they clearly are not doing their job. Maybe we need to build a better task force for homicides instead of just the police department that, you know, go guns a blazing into, you know, issuing no-knock warrants, killing innocent civilians, and then getting away with it. And then having a fucking DA that says what happened was fair.
So then it goes to the media, right? That's the, the they'll make excuse. People will make excuses for the media. And oh well, you know, there's so much to cover, Chris. You know, sometimes stories just slip through the cracks. They slip through the. We just had a presidential election. Yeah, we did, and we know that Joe Biden is no friend of the black community. We know that Joe Biden is putting war hawks, corporatists, and neoliberals who are pro bank, pro war, and f- pro fucking over the black community into his cabinet. But hey, a couple of them are black and brown people, so we should, you know, thumbs up. They wore a Black Lives Matter pin when they were talking about, you know, when they were delivering their platitudes. Come on. There has to be a spin, right? How else is corporate media going to show that black lives absolutely do matter by nonstop coverage of an old white dementia patient that is now in charge of this country? You have a 24 hour news cycle. You don't think you can take a break for an hour? from this this non-stop fucking Joe Biden hand job that let's be honest he might be confused he's getting and you can't talk about the murder of a protester in Louisville protesting police murder of an innocent woman Twenty-four hour news up. You can't even spend maybe fifteen minutes. There are no excuses for this. There is no excuse for why a story like this goes cold. Why there isn't more being done. Oh, we're stretched thin. Are you? Well, then maybe your budget should reflect how thin you're stretched. Because your budget doesn't show that you're stretched thin. Your budget shows that you shouldn't be stretched thin. Enormous police budgets. Enormous. The big question I think a lot of people, uh, well not a lot of people, some people might have is, is this a state-sponsored murder? Right, you have lead activist of one of the largest civil rights move, movements we've seen uh, this side of the century, and uh, and then he just gets killed, and the story gets buried. The cops aren't talking. The DA hasn't made a, a, a statement. Democrats haven't made a statement. I mean, this is a big movement. Everything that's happening in Louisville, from 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 the shooting itself to the protests in the streets to the cops violently attacking said protesters in the streets, to the grand jury giving one cop a sentence for firing at an inanimate object. That's right, he went, he's gonna, he might go to jail for firing at the wrong inanimate object, not murdering a black woman. You don't think that an activist dying in that community, a protester dying in that community, a, a lead protester, and one that was doing as much organizing as Hamdi Travis Nagdi, that that story deserves national attention? Very, very bizarre. And we know that this sort of stuff happens. MLK, Malcolm X, what the, uh, the FBI did with the Black Panthers, what the you know, because that's what's next. The, the the next step is, well, if if uh, if the police aren't going to be protecting our communities, we have no reason to feel safe in the presence of police. Then the citizens need to to, to push back on that and take control. And that's what the Panthers did, right? They had a constitutional right to bear arms. They stood far away from. Uh, the police brandishing their guns, which is their constitutional right to do. They were well within the right to observe the police to make sure that they weren't doing anything wrong. And take what we learned 
the, what we learned from from the Panthers is that some of them got a little too cocky. Uh, you, you you did have some members like Eldridge Cleaver who were um, looking for a war with the cops rather than um, you know some some sense of peace and order. And to create a better society. So is that that far-fetched of an idea? No. Do I have any evidence of it? I don't. I could... I'm merely... Merely making a suggestion. That, hey, this, is, this should not be a rock we leave unturned. Someone standing up for First Amendment rights was gunned down. And uh, we have very little that's being done about it so far. And the media is forcing this story to go as cold as it possibly can. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.